All right, moving on. Let's see what Mr. 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 Mysterious Realms RPG is all about. Oh, oh yes, why not? Well, let's see who's bad or not. Do 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 do. do. All right, so we got ourselves. Um, There we go. All right, well, that's not terrible, I guess, but um, very simple slider, full screen. Well, Mysterious Realms, let's do a new game. And yes, this is a beta build. I didn't see the little text there. Prologue. In a little known world created by the writer's sick mind, good and evil have been crossing swords and magical powers every day without mercy and forgiveness. Alright, well, um, a little bit of fourth wall there. In this hustle and bustle among the fights two heroes were created, literally pulled away from the plow. Their name was Virix and Sophef. They were residents of the village and newly created the great, this great game. Alright. In these hard times, it was necessary to be useful. Unfortunately, our heroes didn't give a damn. After reaching a foreign age, they were kicked out to the village. After a few days of wandering and small fevery, they were caught in the first major town they went to. The times were cruel and the habits of the city uh, of the city interesting. The choice, the choice was put before them. If they do not want to end up on a noose, they must help the city in the fight against the great evil. After equally glorious in their opinion and not very seeing a fight with a group of porky rats advancing to the warehouses, they decided to devote themselves to the pressure hero. They stayed to defend the town. Alright, begin. So yeah, a little bit of like, you know... Um... Whatever. Don't really care about the story. Uh, welcome to the Mysterious Realms RPG. So I got the tutorial right to start here, so press space to click the next uh, hint. You can always save the tutorial in the options, as you can know. In Mysterious Realms, you control a group of two heroes. This group is represented by the one hero on a dungeon map. You can move him using the WSAD. Use WASD or arrow keys to look around. Alright, so... Move and press WSD to move the group, okay. During exploration of the dungeon, you will come across various obstacles, objects, events, enemies. You can examine objects using E. Now use this button to examine these two barrels during the rains when you need them. Some objects may harm your group. Well, that's good to know. Item. Click on the item with the left mouse button and add to the inventory. Okay. Click the bag icon to open the inventory. This is your inventory. Most of the items may only be used during the combat. Equipment affects heroes and armor of heroes and the power of crystals. Also, here you can check the amount of resources in your inventory. Gold, salvage, crystallites, eggs, blah blah blah. Very straightforward. You can now attack this group of enemies. Okay. So, I'm gonna get a sort of desktop dungeon so I feel where like, enemies don't move around at all. Alright, at the beginning of the game, each hero has two skills. Each skill has a cost in Ura. There are four main colors of Auras in the game. Red, blue, yellow, and green. To activate a skill, you must have Auras that require colors first. You can generate such Aura by playing crystals in a corresponding color. Red crystal generates red Aura, blue generates blue, and so on. One crystal always generates an Aura. Playing crystals means attacking the enemy with a crystal in desired color. It is important that each arrow is available to use only for the hero who generated it. If you end this move, an unused arrow will disappear. Press F1 to select a goblin as a target. You can also do it by clicking on it. Alright, so we get basically a goblin here to fight. By the way, I'll note that the, um, the artwork, it's very... Um, how can I put this? So it looks like MS Paint to me. Not that it's a bad thing, but um, 
you know, makes this a very childish looking game. Not that that's a bad thing either, but whatever. Attacking Golem with red crystals will always destroy the red and yellow crystals near it. If during the same turn you destroy the blue crystal spell, you will deal additional damage. Click on the red crystal to deal 2 damage to the Goblin and generate 1 red aura. Okay. So you damage him with that. Now you can use... Um, now, you, now you can generate aura to activate one of the Vark skills, which needs exactly 1 red aura to play. You have just generated that aura by playing a red crystal. Alright, so basically got his, you know, skill here, so you can do it. I hit him. Excellent! As mentioned before, attack enemy has two crystals on the right side of his image. The red and yellow one was just destroyed when Uverx attacked the, uh, the enemy with a red crystal. Now you will be able to attack the goblin with a blue crystal, destroy the second one, and deal additional damage. Now, uh... You can all... You always have to do it uh, during one turn because health crystals reset each turn. One turn consists of one move of each of your hero and enemies. You can attack the enemy with crystals in color other than blue and still deal basic damage, but you won't deal additional um can't, won't deal additional one damage. So basically, you can use whatever crystals you want to damage them, but you know you want to use specific colors to hurt them. Uh, so you can attack the crystal with blue crystal to deal additional damage. You can also attack with silver crystal and deal damage that um, still deal that extra damage. That's because the silver crystal is used for the crystal like any other color, so it's a joker. Uh, keep clicking on the silver crystal with the right mouse button until the color changes to blue. There we go. Basically, now I got that done. Now I can use a silver blue crystal with plus one hundred to deal damage to the goblin. There he goes. Click on items to pick them up. The loot is golden remains. Uh, gold is used to buy items. Remains will convert to salvage. Once you collect 20 salvage, you will gain a random extra item. So, broken shell. Alright. Each hero can play up to two crystals in any color during his move. You can also use one item per hero's move. So, each hero can play crystals and use potions during his move. Now, since the limit of crystals used for the hero's actions has already been reached, we'll, uh, he, um, we will be finishing his move soon. Note the heroes and enemies attack in specific order. The order of heroes' moves is determined by their speed. You can also increase the power of crystals in the t uh, town of Crystallite. You receive Crystallite for finishing a mission and with full luck during the exploration of this dungeon. There are two types of Crystallite. Violet used to upgrade red and blue crystals. Orange used to upgrade yellow and green uh, crystals. Each hero has a weapon. Weapon affects um, the value of attack. The value of attack affects the power of the silver crystals. Power of silver crystals cannot be raised by crystallite. Hero efficiency is defined by the values of free attributes, strength, dexterity, and intellect. They affect the results of random events encountered in the dungeon. Click on the book icon to see the attributes. So there we go, there's our attributes. Soft is basically like, you know, fighter, I think. No, Vorx is the fighter and Salva is the uh, mage, okay? Um, each hero gains experience after finishing a the mission. Thanks to it, they will advance to the next level up to 5. Hover over the bar of a choice to see current experience value of given hero. So, that, what? That is experience right there? I can't really tell. Oh, it's right here. That's the experience power. Um, from previously um, um, unmentioned values, armor reduces damage received by heroes. For instance, Ferris has 2 armor, which reduces incoming damage by 1. Alright, so that's basically, you know, they get experience, they have armor, stuff like that. If you want to check the power of all crystals, click on the red crystal icon. So I guess there's a power right there. So we use one of this and we use one of that. Those are like, you know, reduced then. You have a total of 18 crystals in the deck. You draw up to 5 of them each turn. Once your deck is empty, it's replenished by the same set of crystals. So yeah, this game is apparently like a deck builder in some ways because like, you know, um, you have like these crystals for your base your cards and such. The number under the crystals represents their power. So in this example, you have four red crystals. Two of them deal two damage and two deal one damage during the attack. Okay. If the given number is red, it means that the corresponding crystal has already been played, this one during an attack on a goblin. You will recover it when you deck is replenished. 
Alright. If the number is yellow, it means that the corresponding crystal is in your hand. If it's white, it's still in your deck. So, stuff is in my hand. It's yellow. Stuff is in my deck. It's white. The number in the middle represents how many crystals of a given color you have left across your hand and your deck. A small panel of crystal info shows you some basic information about what you are. Alright, I'll note this tutorial really drags on. Uh, um, if you're like a developer, you probably don't want to have your tutorial um, drawing on this much. Probably you only want to like, you know, tell like players like a little bit and like, you know, have a nerf fight. Tell them some more in that fight, have a nerf fight. This seems like a little bit like, you know, front load like information here. It's kind of like dragging on a little bit, but whatever. Uh, number of turns right there. Bonus experience, it will add to experience received after a mission. Um, okay. Enemy self modifier, every 10th ten, turn of uh, health of common enemies, creatures, blah blah blah. It's so basically I want to basically go as fast as possible. After playing crystals and using skill items during the combat, you can end move a hero, and we will do it very soon. Please end already. After hero's move, which target will, will be next? Each enemy can use either a basic attack or a special skill. The enemy can use a special ability only if the color of the attack, um, active crystal is the same as one of the colors that they give an ability. Otherwise, it will use a basic attack, which will just hit one air hero for X, depending on the enemy damage, so... The nameplate will be shown instead of the health bar during the basic attacks, okay? Special abilities. Colors that which doctor's abilities are blue and yellow, which means that it will use its special ability whenever a blue or yellow crystal is active. So, in Gauntlet's next move, which will be now, it will use its special ability. You can move the mouse over the name of the skill using the tooltip, so, okay. Rock Dart, that deals more damage to one target, okay. The order of active crystals is always the same. Red, blue, yellow, green, and red. You do not have to remember the order in which crystals change. Simply move the mouse over the active crystal icon in order for order for it to be displayed. In addition, the ability that the enemy is going to use this turn will be highlighted in yellow. The number next, um, next to the active crystal represents how many crystals are in the deck. That's about all for combat now. And then here's move, press space, and we'll be doing all that. Okay. So he attacks my guy there. So click. And now we can use our special bullies over here. Oh, you should, should use that one, I guess, to kill him. Well, whatever, that's fine. Go and play some of my crystals. And we got a new turn, okay. That guy went first that time, apparently. Um. Okay, so we're still in the tutorial, I guess, for whatever reason. Don't forget to collect the loop because it disappears after you end a turn, okay. Uh, now attack this group of Tractors Combat. See, I'll note this game, it probably is going a little bit too front loaded in, in the tutorial, so... If you're a developer, you probably want to fix that a little bit. Oh, why not? Can't even do that. Alright, Goblin Dogs. Alright, so now this guy's turn. So he's got like, you know, these abilities right here. Uh, let's go with blue and yellow, maybe. So I can use this ability. Mutilate. So the speed is decreased by free. That makes it a little bit slower, I guess. You know, I'll, I'll note by the way that if you're basically in a tutorial, you shouldn't be like, you know, hand-holding people that much, like, you know, preventing them from doing stuff. That's really an option op to do, but whatever. Uh, let's see here. Let's go after this guy, maybe. So you got abilities here. You got yellow and green.
I think I'll go for corruption on this guy, so let's go green. Hmm. I guess we have to have like the elf first or something there. That's kind of annoying. Or I'll use this thing, but whatever. Let's just enter turn. New turn. This guy's slow because of the stupid thing there, so that's cool. Let's have you go take a turn, I guess. So that's on cooldown. I can't use it right away, so let's go with this. Hit him with that. If I am with green, I guess we'll do more damage, I guess. You can attack the same with a crystal, however, you have to attack it with crystals in this color in one turn to deal additional damage shown under these crystals, so... One of these right here, I guess. Get rid of one of those, basically, for the additional damage. Let's go after this guy, I guess, so... There goes that one right there. If I change this to be... Oops. If you just click it, it automatically attacks my guess of that. That's not what I wanted to do, but whatever. Right click to basically change the crystal first for those ones, I guess. But whatever. Uh, just kill him off right away, I guess. So that's done. Now it's time for the last part of the tutorial, Encounter Ram Event. Exceptionally, the event has a highlight normally, however, is invisible, so you can fall into it during the exploration. To make it easier to locate the event, a question mark appears over the head of a character when it's close to the event. Okay. Alright, so, events are random encounters on a group face during a journey. You can try to cipher these inscriptions, do, um, do Intellect 5, check success, a hidden treasure is revealed. Okay. To overcome random ev um, events, you have to perform a true check or fate test, which are very similar. In a true check, at least one hero has to roll the given number or greater. In this case, it's a 5. If you roll a selection number, you will often gain the reward indicated in the description of the event, so... We get a hidden tre treasure, you get Intellect 5. Like in this case, with a hidden treasure will be revealed if you pass the Intellect check of 5. There are also events in which there will be a penalty if you don't roll the required number greater, so negative events basically. Um, press the arrow to examine the event. This is your trip to uh, panel, okay. This is a trip that will be tested. Blah blah. Greater or equal number will have to be rolled in order to exceed. You will have to roll for both heroes. The roll numbers will be shown in these windows. This is the range of numbers which, from which the roll will be rolled. These are numbers that will be added to the rolled number, I guess. You will also be, um, also be able to increase these numbers by using crystal specific items or special skills of your heroes. As you can see, Verk's number range is, uh, is much lower. That's because his intellect value is lower than Sarof, Sophos. So he's not very smart, Verk's, but whatever. Fortunately, you need at least one hero to exceed, so Verk's range of numbers will do no harm. Vork's range would, um, would be important if you had to roll a required number or greater to avoid negative consequences. In such um, case, every hero that failed the check would receive the damage. So, okay, so that's very important. If you have like you like these like you know negative events and you have to do for each hero, they can all take you like damage if you're not careful. Return to the event. If you want to check the description, move the mouse over to image of the event. So there's that. To increase the roll number by one for each hero, you can also use a crystal of any color. Crystals used in this way will lose one power, but only for your next use. Uh, when we're feeling the deductive value of his power, we reset. Blah blah. I right, select one of these. Let's grab the one here. 
Great. Note that you can't use the second bonus because you don't have the required item in your inventory. You'll be able to find these in barrels and stuff like that, so you're not going to care about that one. You can, however, use the third bonus. It doesn't require you to have um, any items or crystals. You can just use it because it's obviously the Warlock. So basically, he's like a certain class, I guess, that gets the benefit. Cool. So there's that bonus, so you basically get that one. So roll the number will be increased by two. Press the roll button to see the outcome. So Varx of course failed, but this guy succeeded, that's fine. As you can guess, a happy green face means success, red, uh, a red um, face means failure, but only one success was needed uh, for, so the check is passed. Note that the party receives bonus experience for uh, Varx fail, so even unlucky rolls can bring benefits. Okay, so he gets experience for failing. Interesting. Press the face button to end the event. Just a word about the interface buttons not, um, not mentioned previously. You can press this button to check the progress of the current mission. Okay. You can um, click this button to hold the guidebook. You can also check hints by holding Q. Options. If you skip some part of the tutorial, here's a quick overview of the game. You can also watch this tutorial on YouTube. That's all. Have a nice game. Alright, I want to say that, you know, that tutorial is way too long. I mean, that's going to do a quick check here, but... Yeah, I spent 20 minutes just on a tutorial alone. That's way too long. But whatever. Let's just grab some stuff and leave. There's also should be like a, a fast move, I think, on like this, like, you know, thing here. Is there an option like that, I wonder? There's no other options. Okay, well, that's kind of stupid, but whatever. There's the exit. Okay, what happens now? Are we done? That's a little bit slow, but whatever. Um, I might have just forgot these items back here. That's kind of sucky, but whatever. There we go. Get that stuff. Now complete the mission. All right, so that's done. Proceed. So town, party returns to the town after every mission. Here you can buy equipment and potions, upgrade crystals, and learn new skills. During the first visit, it's good to go see the blacksmith or witch. After proper portion, you can set up the mission. While in the main city, screen, hold Q to highlight all buildings and see their function. Well, that's done. Let's just go try and jump back into something, though. So that's the town. Let's just go jump right into combat right away, I guess. There's an item. Nothing happened. Auras of crystals played by the heroes during his, his move. You can use the aura to activate skills of your heroes or reset every move. So, grinding gear. The colossal remnant of a destroyed concert converted into a trap is rolling just ahead, um, just at you. Do agility check, success, receive 4 or 6 salvage for each success, um, fail, hero takes damage. So basically here's like a interesting thing, you got both success and fails in these things. Alright, well, let's see here. Um, so I'm going to discard a blue crystal of this color to basically get a positive event, so... So there we go, we'll get rid of that. Get a bonus from that. So I could use salvage to basically get um, get biased, but I think it's a little overkill, so let's not do that. Let's just roll. So I've already took some damage from that, but he got success, that's cool. There's my salvage. Hooray, finish. Let's go after these bats. Vampire bats, bloody fangs. So they got red, yellow, red, green, or they got blue, yellow, red, yellow. Let's go after this guy first. 
A little bit of damage to him. And more damage to him as well. That works for me, I guess. Now, I could try and kill this guy, but I don't think I'll be able to kill him in time, so... Let's go like this. And... like that. Bloody fangs. And he heals up, apparently. All skits are set, apparently. Now, I like the fact there's like tooltips, but you know, it feels kind of, kind of excessive with the tutorial. But whatever, let's just go like this then. Um, this guy hurt me the last time, so that's a bit of an issue. Thinking, thinking, thinking. So here's a question, how do you get this stuff, I guess, this one right here? Well, the different elements and stuff. Whatever, let's just go like this then. Oh, that's how you do it. You right-click this and you'll basically kill him stuff with that. That's good, no? Let's go like this then. Lots of damage to that guy then. Now, I don't have a whole lot to basically hit this guy with, so that's a bit of an issue, but whatever. Let's do some damage to that, I guess. Alright, we killed that group. So of wisdom, you can donate two pieces of crystal light of a bonus to receive bonus experience. Cool. So there we go, just got a little bit of bonus experience from that. Alright, you try to open it. Each failed test is, um, decreases the difficulty of the next one by one, down to two. You also lose two turns whenever you fail, so... Basically it'll get tougher to enemy if, if I'm not careful. Um, let's test our strength, I guess. I think this guy's a, t uh, a, you know, one of those, like, you know... Yeah, I'll go with that. Go for a strength. I guess we should wait a turn basically get more stuff back, but whatever. Oh well. Um, let's just roll and see what I do. Two fails, so I get some experience from that. Hey, I got my stuff back, cool. Uh, let's go with one of these then. Maybe you can't do it after, like, you know, um, you fail a test, that's kind of sucks, but whatever. Let's use a pick then, I guess. Or I guess we're to finish. Alright, so basically it's, it got a little bit easier now, because I failed it, that's good to know. Let's do that this time, let's roll. There we go. Get that gold. So, yeah, this is a very, like, interesting game, I guess, but... It feels kind of clunky in many ways. I have to say that. Alright, kick up some Wish Doctors. Let's go here, and... Do a little bit of damage to that guy. I 
And now it's this guy's turn. Cool, I can use this thing now. Let's go after you with this. That slows down the Witch Doctor. See, this is definitely very, like, you know, desktop dungeon in, in many ways, but it's also very, like, you know, uh, puzzly based as well. Oh, Healing Waves actually heals everyone. That's good to know. That's gonna hurt me a little bit, that one, but whatever. Let's see, let's go after this guy again, I guess, so... Go with this. There's some damage to him. Hey, resist the claw. Now here's a question: Do they have cooldowns and uh, uh, cooldowns and their abilities? I wonder. Because that could be a thing to worry about. Um, let's go after you. This there was that goblin. Alright, new turn. Ow. Okay, let's go with uh, this. And we'll go with this. Now, what if it's like builds up for both heroes as like you go around with this stuff? So, you guys, you save up for your other heroes, like, you know, you save up for it, I guess. So, that's pretty really how you could use this, by the way. You could just go, like, you know, um. Build up of like the, the other heroes like stuff, I guess. Alright, let's see here. Finish off that one. Take a lot of damage from these guys, but whatever. Ow. Uh, let's see here, let's go like this. And this. And this. Slow him down, so it's not gonna hurt me next time, right, at least. Well, he's dead anyways, that's good, no? Oh, I got ourselves an event somewhere around, apparently. Actually, I just ran into this guy, but whatever. Here's Jix. Hi, Jix. Let's see here. He resisted the, uh, you know, mutilation there, I guess, but whatever. You are going to go with, um... Green and yellow, I guess. I don't have any items, I guess, to show. That sucks, but whatever. And move. So I probably only got four crystals left in my deck here. I can't really see what my crystals are, that's kind of an issue, but whatever. Alright, let's just take this guy down, I think, so... 
Let's go with uh, blue here, I guess. And a red. And then we'll go with this. Then you're gonna go. Red. You went first again. These are resisting his abilities, that's nice. So apparently as like you run off crystals you replenish your deck after a time, that's nice. That's good now. Let's hit you with this and this. There's some neat things about this game I have to say. All right, it's a bear trap. Let's see here. Let's go with, um... Yeah, I think we'll go with this. Oh, let's roll. Ouch. I hurt that guy. Hey, look at that. I got the mission complete. So I could explore around a little bit, but I think we're really interested at this point, so let's just go to town. There's some level up level ups for these guys. Well, that's basically what this game's all about. I guess in the town you can do stuff as well, so... You can go to block stuff to get new items and stuff if you want. There's an oracle. Each um, of the heroes may know more and more skills as they level up. Up to four skills may be active at any one time. For example, on a second level, Warlock may um, know up to five skills, of which a max of four of them may be active. Okay, interesting. So Oracle's where you level up. Your skills and such. Versus where you get all your basic goods. All right, so that's basically what this game's like, you know, boils down to, I guess, for the most part. It's basically like, you know, a puzzle type of game. With like card based mechanics, it's not that bad. But I think we're gonna end it right here. And well, I hope you guys enjoyed the you know brief little looking at it. It's not a bad game by you know any stretch, but I think it could be like you know uh, the, the tutorial could just be improved a little bit, and it feels a little bit clunky, something like the buttons and stuff like that. Because like you know, um, how can I put this? Uh, the tutorial basically like you know restricts you a little bit too much, I think. And then like in the actual game. Um, it's kind of like hard to like find like the information like how many cards like do I have like you know of like you know um, different like crystals like left and stuff like that or where do I find my stats? I, it's probably explained a little bit in the tutorial, but you know um, I should be able to hover around like firing in, in the actual game as well. But whatever, that's basically it for this game. Hope you guys enjoy it and take care.